Greetings cousins near and far. Welcome to my channel Ancestral Spotlight. If you would be so kind to give a like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. As many of you know, when we do genealogy, sometimes we walk through a door into our past that only afterward we realize we were not yet ready to open. But because our past was lost to us, we don't know what's hidden there. We don't know what to steal ourselves against. I thought the records would go to a small village with vague information, as so many of my Hungarian lines do. What I found couldn't have been further from my expectations. Lesson learned, never assume. As a seasoned genealogist, I thought I was prepared to break down the brick wall and see what could be found. I wasn't. It took me months to grapple with my findings. So today, I'm going to share with you a story, not of ancient ancestors, not of relatives you are likely to share a name, although perhaps culture and circumstance. My great-grandmother's family was elusive. Coming into the Pine Barrens of New Jersey in the late 1890s and early 1900s from Germany and Hungary. Difficult to trace, brick wall branches that hung in my family tree with lots of question marks for over two decades. There were no tales about the family amongst relatives. Older generations didn't talk about the past much. There were stories about one of my second great grandmothers missing her homeland so badly she locked herself in the attic for the latter years of her life. It was depressing. Some families embraced the ways of the old country. My great grandmother's family did not, and I didn't know why. They were from Hungary. They spoke German. My second great grandmother had a German sounding last name, Letner. She married a young German immigrant who had no family in America. He remains a mystery still. My second great-grandmother, Bertha Lettner, died young, in her 20s, from an accidental fall. She left one surviving child, my great-grandmother, Elizabeth. Bertha was the only known child of her parents, Coleman Lettner and Barbara Kipperth. DNA testing is helpful, but in this case, Two generations of immigrants with no collateral branches. For a second and third great-grandparent, it severely limits findings. Aside from my closer known cousin DNA matches for this side of the family, there was nothing connecting me further back. At least right away. Having DNA matches can sometimes be a waiting game. Examining details, records soon revealed that my third great-grandparents, Coleman and Barbara, we're from a town that is very difficult to pronounce, so I'm going to place it on the screen. Finding this village on a modern map proved difficult. After some research, I discovered this village was known today as Pogrevica, Apatin, West Baca, Serbia. You'll have to excuse my pronunciation. A few things happened at once. The records came and the branches grew. I noticed how all the names appeared to be German, not Hungarian. Schuster, Graber, Muller, and so forth. And as I researched Pogrevica specifically, events in the village history struck me. Quote, A new wave of colonization occurred in 1748 when many German colonists settled in Pogrevica. The colonists came from many different regions in southern Germany and East France. The gathering center was in Ulm, Germany, and from that point, they were transported by the Danube to Appetin, which became the main base for the German expansion in Volvadina. End quote. And a little further down, it reads, quote, When the Yugoslav partisans came on October 24, 1944, they liberated Pogrevica from Axis occupations. NVNOJ, an acronym for Anti-Fascist Council, of the National Liberation of Yugoslavia, declared its mainly German population as public enemies. Also in Pogrevica, the German civil population became victims of excessive revenge of the partisans. They were partially shot, tortured to death, or sent to one of several concentration camps that existed until 1948." End quote. 
things were beginning to make sense. The surnames and records led me through a few generations in the area before the branches traced back to locations near Ulm, Germany. I read more and learned about the population known as the Danischwaben. These were my people. This was my past. I've been doing research for so long, and I have never heard this history, the names of these ancestors. With more research, it became apparent that the Danischwaben were of ethnic German, and they had resided in the area for over 200 years. Part of the deal, when they took the land grants, was that they didn't have to side with anyone, any country, in any war. During World War II, their choice was taken from them because they were ethnic German. Some of the men were conscripted into the German military towards the end of the war. It was a bittersweet discovery, but nothing could have prepared me for what came next. It finally happened. A single, low Centimorgan DNA match led me to a tree of an older gentleman. In this tree I spied familiar names. This was the first cousin I had found along this branch. My third great-grandfather, Coleman Lettner, his mother's parents, Michael Schuster and Eva Graber. Michael and Eva hung in the branches of this man's tree. Anxiously, I followed down his branches and for the first time laid my eyes on a picture of a cousin of my beloved grandmother. My grandmother was Dorothy, daughter of Elizabeth. This man's grandmother was Apollonia. I found her beautiful and strikingly similar to my grandmother. Finally, a connection. DNA, pictures, records. The brick wall for this branch was broken. I noticed the head covering she wore in the picture, and it was clear that there was some cultural mixing, common for the area, so not all just ethnic German. A surprise to me for the simple fact that it wasn't what I expected, and I found it pleasantly intriguing. And then I read about Apollonia. While my third great-grandparents Coleman and Barbara sailed with their only known daughter to America in 1896, Apollonia was one of many cousins to remain in the old country. She had been married with children, having at least one daughter who went on to have a family that immigrated to America in 1956. Apollonia was 54 years old in 1945 when she was rounded up by the AVNOJ and sent to the Kakawa concentration camp for the simple fact that she was an ethnic German, even though she wore that head covering and was something mixed beyond just ethnic German. She died there and was buried in an unmarked grave in the Gakawa concentration camp cemetery. To finally find something, with pictures even, and to see a likeness to my own grandmother one moment and then to realize everything that happened in the next, it was like a small death. As my throat tightened up and tears ran down my face, I stared at the side-by-side -side pictures of Apollonia and my grandmother. All I could see and feel in that moment was my grandmother, imagining if it had been her. It easily could have been, had Coleman and Barbara decided not to come to America. Once upon a time, I'd asked, where have all my cousins gone? My heart sank as it dawned on me why there were so few DNA matches on these branches. I'm an avid genealogist. I research every day. This find took an emotional toll on me. It was devastating. I stopped researching that day, beginning a hiatus that lasted months. When I finally made some semblance of peace and was able to return to family research, I made it a mission to muster the courage and contact that elder cousin, grandson of Apollonia. As it happened, in the space of time from my discovery to my return, this elder cousin had passed away. Any opportunity to connect and learn about my history was gone. However, as I learned more about him, I discovered he was a researcher also and a sharer of knowledge within the Danischwaben community. I have a lot of work to do, a lot to discover, explore, and preserve so that my children and grandchildren the future generations of my family will know their history. In the end, I'm so thankful the brick wall of this family line finally came down. I wouldn't undo it if I could. There is a darkness here, a 
a sadness that will loom in these branches of mine. But there is a bittersweet lining to it all. I now know the names and faces of my relatives. I know their stories. While some met a horrifically tragic end, it's important to understand that they lived lives with light and positivity. They are not defined by the last few months, weeks, days and hours they lived. They were more than that. I will remember them and honor them. Most importantly, I will learn from them and keep vigilant in my life to guard against hate and discrimination and teach my children the same. We are one world and one race.